I really thought I'd love this series of sleeping bags. The Sea Summit Spark and Flame are almost excellent products, but fall short on a couple of things. But let's take a look at what's good and what's bad about these sleeping bags because they might still be the right fit for you. The first good thing is how many options you can get with the Sea to Summit Spark series of sleeping bags. It comes in the men's version, which is called the Spark, but then also the women's version, which is called the Flame. But we'll get into the differences between the men's and women's versions a little bit later. It comes in four different temperature ratings. I have here the men's five degree Fahrenheit version, but also comes in 48, 28, and 18 degree Fahrenheit versions. For the men's bags, those are limit ratings, not comfort ratings. The women's bags use comfort ratings instead of limit ratings, so have slightly different options for the temperatures. You can also get regular length and long length. I'm 5'10", 180 pounds, and I find the regular length to be great for me. One of the biggest benefits with this bag is the weight. It weighs under two pounds at 880 grams, and that's because of the materials that they use. The materials are very high and ultralight materials, but they also had to sacrifice some things, but we'll get into that once we talk about what's bad about this bag. Like I said, the materials with the Spark bags are really high end. It uses seven denier ripstop nylon for the outer shell, and then really lightweight seven denier ripstop nylon on the inner shell. It uses 850 power filled down, which is a really nice balance between ultra lightweight, but still performing really well in humid and moist conditions. And that down is RDS certified and also treated with a hydrophobic treatment called ultra dry. And that hydrophobic treatment is gonna allow the down to stay lofty in moist and humid conditions. The 40 and 28 degree versions of the bag use sewn through baffles. The 18 degree Fahrenheit and five degree Fahrenheit bags, you have box baffles. And that makes sense. Box baffles are gonna be warmer than sewn through baffles because you don't have cold seeping through those seams. All have vertical baffles in the torso here and then horizontal baffles at the foot end. And this helps with preventing down migration and then cold spots developing in the pad. Having horizontal baffles in the torso can lead to the down to falling to the sides, especially if you're a side sleeper, and that's gonna to lead to cold spots on top of you. So by having the vertical baffles in the torso, you're gonna have less down migration to the sides. Another nice feature with the construction of this bag is that it has a zipper guard for the zipper here, and it really helps prevent the zipper from catching. I almost never have the zipper catch when I'm doing up and undoing the zipper, and that's a rare thing with sleeping bags. Comfort-wise, this bag is really comfortable. The seven denier inner fabric is really soft and feels great on the skin and never feels clammy. Like I said, I'm 5'10", 180 pounds, and I find the fit of the men's regular to be perfect. It's not too tight or too loose anywhere throughout the bag. A feature that I really like with the Spark bags is the foot box. So it's shaped like your foot, which is awesome. Some bags don't do that, and that means you have a little bit of pressure on top of your toes. I don't feel any pressure on top of my toes when I'm laying on my back with this bag. Considering all the lightweight materials the Spark bags use, the durability is quite good. I've put this bag through its paces and I don't have any issues with it. I've had some issues with some other bags where the zipper does catch and that produces tears in the material, especially if it's lightweight material like it is with a spark. But the zipper guard works really well and I haven't had any issues with this bag. If you do have any issues, you're gonna be covered by Sea Summit's lifetime warranty. I've had to use that warranty due to a manufacturer defect and Sea Summit was able to work through that very effectively and I was able to get a replacement product very quickly. The series of bags also comes in a win women's specific version called the Flame Series. The women's version has extra down and is narrow at the shoulders and wider at the hips. Like the men's, the women's version has multiple temperature ratings. I have here the 15 degree Fahrenheit version. And I do have some thoughts about this bag. It's super lofty, so I do find it really warm, but I do find there's a little bit of a draft coming through sometimes. Like I said, it is shaped more for a woman's body and I do find it really comfortable. My toes aren't hitting the end and I don't feel like I'm overly squished at any point. I think the biggest thing for me is that the zipper is really hard to open when you're inside of it. So I feel like I get stuck and it's really terrifying. And that takes us into what's bad about the Spark and Flame bags. The first series of issues have to do with ease of use and the big one being the zipper. So the bag uses number three YKK zippers and while YKK zippers are usually awesome, the zipper on the Spark and Flame bags is really quite terrible to be honest. Even when you're outside the bag trying to undo and do up the zipper, it can be quite finicky and it takes a lot of effort just to do it up and undo it. When you're inside the bag, it becomes even more difficult and can sometimes have you trapped inside the bag for minutes on end. If you have to go to the bathroom or something in the middle of the night, that can actually be very dangerous. The other ease of use issue has to do with the cinch that's used for the hood and then the neck baffle. Both are on the same cinch and you have to kind of remember which cord is which in order to do up or loosen up one of the other. 
Most of the time, you're just pulling on both and it's just tightening up all the way around you. Sometimes I like to have the hood a little bit looser and the neck locked down or vice versa. And the way this system is set up does not allow you to do that at all. And it's just another frustrating thing with this bag. Another issue with the spark and flame bags is warmth. So I have here the men's five degree Fahrenheit version. That's the limit rating. The comfort rating is 18 degrees Fahrenheit, but I can get it to just below freezing before it starts to get cold. I've tested these bags in a whole bunch of conditions with a bunch of different sleeping pads. And my kind of general consensus is that they have a comfort rating of just below freezing. And there's a couple reasons for that. The first reason is the baffling. This bag uses six centimeters of baffling. So that's the height and loft of the bag. The more height and loft you have in a bag, the warmer it's gonna be. And six centimeters is on the low end for a bag with this rating. But the biggest thing that I think leads to this bag being cold but still having that lower EN rating has to do with the draft tubes. So this is the draft tube for the zipper and it's really narrow. I actually went into the store and looked at a whole bunch of different sleeping bags with the same rating as the Spark and the draft tubes for the zipper are way thicker on those. This is just a very anemic thin draft tube and because of that I feel a lot of cold air coming through the zipper throughout the night. The other draft tube in the neck here is also quite thin. Well, it looks like it's kind of lofty and big. It's not enough to get a good seal around your neck and shoulders. And because of that, you get drafts coming in through that way, and that's gonna cool you off as well. Well, I think Sea Summit did test this with the EN standard and did get to that rating in an honest manner. I think sometimes companies get a little bit caught up chasing specs and those ratings and don't take into account some of the things that are gonna affect their warmth or the performance of a product in real world conditions. It'd take only a few extra ounces to increase the girth of the zipper and the neck draft tubes and I think that would easily get this bag to the warmth rating that it's advertised as. The other big negative with this bag is the price. It costs $550 US which is not cheap for a sleeping bag. For the weight of this bag and how lightweight it is, I'm actually pretty happy with how it performs from a temperature standpoint. But what I'm not happy about is how it performs for that price. The difficulties with usability for the hood and zipper is also a bit annoying. But if you end up thinking that this bag is for you and you find it on sale or something, then go check out this video where I go over a pad that I think would pair very well with this. It's the Nemo Tensor and might be the best all-around pad out there.